Oh man, animal abuse is a bitch. So I wasn't really sure what to expect going into this movie. I love the first Guardians movie, it's actually what got me into Marvel in the first place, but the second movie I was not a fan of so much. It was kind of just penis and piss jokes. Then you had the previews for this installment give off this weird vibe of this is going to be like one last ride. Kind of like the Fast and Furious movies have been doing for like 20 films, it seems like. That this is the last one, you know, until the next one because more money. Come on, you're not fooling anyone. You're going to make more of these, aren't you? However, I was actually pleasantly surprised by this movie. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is basically a Rocket Raccoon origin story via flashback. And through flashbacks, we finally get to see where he came from and finally understand why he never wanted to talk about his past because damn is it dark. Honestly, I think this might be the most mature Marvel movie thus far. Of course, the main villain in this movie is Rocket's creator. And now he's back trying to kidnap Rocket because he needs him to complete his perfect society. As far as Marvel villains go, this one may not be the most memorable. By the end of the movie, he does kind of just develop into this generic bad guy who screams at everyone, but he is definitely the most evil. Thanos genocided half the universe, but at least he was kind of humane about it. This guy straight up tortures quote unquote lore life forms and calls it experimentation. So yeah, if you're a crier at movies, or if you love animals, you're probably gonna cry at this movie. I will admit I kind of teared up a little bit. Also, if this dickhead is trying to create the perfect society, he is clearly not as smart as he thinks he is. Utopia Building 101, don't create a planet of furries. Then of course you got the rest of the Guardians coping with the trauma that this situation is causing. Rocket is their friend, and they obviously don't want to lose him, like they've already lost so much. And a focal point for this is Gamora. As you'll remember, spoiler alert, Gamora died in Avengers Infinity War, but they brought her back in Endgame. But this is not the same Gamora, this is an alternate version of her. And as much as Peter Quill wants her to be the woman that he loved, the physical body of that woman is right there, and yet it's still not her and being so close and yet so far like that is understandably crushing for him. So, he has to learn to let her go, which is probably the most dynamic part of the movie character development wise, so I kinda wish it was a bigger focus than what it was. But this movie was already pretty jam packed, so I understand why some parts were more developed than others. I do feel like the last third of the film wasn't as strong as the first two thirds, it was mostly just a shoot 'em up finale like all these movies kind of end with. Speaking of which though, there is one of those really long one take corridor fight scenes that is just like, wow, that, that was pretty epic. You've probably heard about it and yeah, it, it lives up to the hype. I do really like the fact that like the other Guardians movie, this one doesn't get all tangled up with everything else going on in the MCU. It's its own story contained within the Guardian series, so you don't really need the other several dozen Marvel movies to make any sense of it. Which is a good thing because Marvel has kinda sucked lately. Unfortunately, I think this one is more of an anomaly for being good rather than a return to form. At the end of the day, this is Rocket's story being told here and they nailed that part of it. So overall, I would say Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 it's definitely worth checking out. And now it's time to end this review. We'll all fly away together into the forever and beautiful sky. Thanks for watching. Good night.